making headlines for first at night. New constitution. The Prime Minister gives the media a good talking to over yesterday's comments by the two chapters. Saitam decision on the way. President Maitri Pala Sirisena pledges to reveal the government's final decision next week. Trickery. Joint opposition accuses the government for filing unnecessary cases to postpone elections. Changing lanes. Late President Jaya Jawardhana's grandson to enter politics from the SLFP. Making global headlines. Country's youngest. New Zealand decides Jacinda Ardern as their third female Prime Minister. Bring you news from home and across the world. This is First at Nine on Other Than 24-7. Good evening, I'm Katharina Chang. Now, astronomers have come forward to explain the objects seen in the sky in some places in the island. They suspect it to be an asteroid, which is a part of a meteor which turns into a fireball once exploded. Speaking to other than a scientist of Arthur C. Clarke Institution for Modern Technologies in Morotua, says they suspect the asteroid fell into the sea following the explosion. Sightings were reported from the Sabaragamo and southern provinces around 8.30 last evening of an unusual object in the sky accompanied with the sound of an explosion. The object was sighted in various areas including Denyaya, Nelua, Kotapala, Akurasa, Matara, Balasmula, Tangol, Ambalantota and several areas in the Gaul district as well as in Omalpe of the Ratnapura district. In the meantime, those who witnessed the unusual object in the sky expressed their views to other Dharana. I am a resident at Kodagoda in front of highway. So yesterday at about 8.30 in the evening I saw a very big light so I uh, went out at last it fell in, into the ground. So it was something uh, surprising that was something like vibration. Yesterday I, at once I came home I saw a huge uh, circle in the sky and also suddenly I heard a big noise from the sky. However, the scientist at Arthur C. Clarke Institution for Modern Technologies in Morotua told Radha Dharana that an asteroid could have broken away from a meteor and exploded in the sky. The institution also said that although NASA in America pays close attention to meteors that move close to the Earth, while identifying and keeping an eye on them, sometimes asteroids break away from meteors and burn once they come into contact with the Earth's atmosphere. The scientists further noted that since damages were not reported to property or life, the Arthur C. Clarke Institution suspects the part of the asteroid fell into the sea following the explosion. When these asteroids come towards the Earth, it comes in at a speed of 65 kilometers per second. They have seen a fireball in the air. At first, the light is seen and then the sound is heard. According to our calculations, this may have exploded 150 to 200 kilometers away from the Earth's surface. Even bits of sand which comes with it have the strength to cause heavy damage to a roof of a house. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe accuses media of publishing and broadcasting false reports on the views expressed by the Working Committee members of the Askari and Malvatu chapters over the constitutional process. The Prime Minister made the remark at an event held at the parliamentary premises today. A research report compiled by three institutes, Internews Organisation, the AFRIEL and the Sri Lanka College of Journalism was presented to Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe today. During the occasion, the researchers said certain elements are attempting to mislead public of the South on the constitutional process. Thank you. 
උද්ධරණය ආවේ ඒක නොමග යැවීමක් නේද මොකද මල්වත්ත මහානායක ස්වාමීන් වහන්සේ උන්වහන්සේගේ අදහස් එදා හොඳට ප්‍රකාශ කරලා තිබුණා තාම විවස්ථාවක් නැහැ ජනාධිපතිතුමා මම කියන දේ පිළිගන්නවා කියලා ඕක කැඳෙවි දියවඩ නිල වෙනා යාගේ පින්තූරේ දාන්න ඕන ඔතෙන් යාගුත් මම අහන්නේ මේ පිළිබඳ ඉතින් මම කියන්නේ නොමග යවන්න එපා මහානායක ස්වාමීන් වහන්සේ මොකක් හරි කියනවා පක්ෂ හෝ විරුද්ධව දාන්න ඒ නැති වෙලාවේ දාන්නේ ඇයි ඒකට අපි මේක ප්‍රශ්න කරන්න තියෙනවනේ ඇයි මේ මාධ්‍ය බොරු කරන්නේ කියලා කවුද දිවයින ඉන්නේ එක්කෙනත් පිළිතුරු දෙන්න බෑනේ මොකද දැන් මෙතන මාධ්‍ය තියාගෙන මම කියන්නේ ඒක දැන් මේක යනවා හේ අද හැන්දෑ වෙනකොට නේ දද දවල් වෙනකොට මම කියන පුළුවන් අයට දාන්න කියලා ඩේලි බිල් එකක් තිබුණු මම කල්ලගෙන ඉන්නේ දැන් මට අහලා කියන්න ඔක එඩිටර් එකේ කොයි දින්නේ කියලා මල් ලාවිත මහානායක ස්වාමීන් වහන්සේ දැන් මම කතාව දාන්නේ ෆ්‍රන්ට් page එකේද අන්තිම පිටුවේද මට ෆ්‍රන්ට් මාර දෙනවද හෙඩ් ලයින්ස් දෙනවද හිට මොකද මල් වත්ත මහානායක නැති තැන දැම්මා නා අගමැතිවල ඉන්න තැන අපිට දෙන්න ඕනේ හෙඩ් ලයින්ස් මේ මම බලාපොරොත්තු වෙන මේක දැන් මේ ගුවන් විදුලි රූපවාහිනි නාලිකාවත් ඒ වගේම දානවා කියලා මේ ටික දානවා නේද මට පොරොන්දුවක් දෙනවද මේක දානවා කියලා මේ හෙඩ් ලයින් හැටියට මොකද්ද මේ සෙල්ලම ජනතාව වරමක් දුන්නා නම් දැන් ඔයගොල්ලෝ කියන්නේ ජනතාව වරම ක්‍රියා කරන්න එපා ද ලංකාදීපය කියන්නේ ආ මේ තියෙන්නේ නව ව්‍යවස්ථාවට මල්වත්තු අස්ගිරි කියලා මල්වත්ත මහානායක හාඳුරු අස්ගිරිය මහානායක හාඳුරු දාලා දෙන්න මේ දෙන්නම ගියේ දෙන්න දෙනාමම ගියේ නැහැ මල්වත්ත මහානායක ලංකාවෙත් නැහැ ආ no need for a new constitution මේ මෙතන දාලා තියෙනවා මල්වත්තයි අස්ගිරිය මහානායක ස්වාමීන් වහන්සේ දෙනාමම ගියේ නැහැ මල්වත්ත ස්වාමීන් වහන්සේ ලංකාවේ නැහැ දැන් ඉතින් ඔය ගිහින් කියන්න නව ව්‍යවස්ථාවක් එපා කාට දෙපා දිවයිනට දෙපා मन दे अहन नहीं ना एडिट अगे वन डे मैं कॉल लेता हूँ लेहान ने तो हम एडिट अगे मित्र है ना वो युवास्ता को सांसोजन ही पारी भी दो दी मैं टाइ यह लकियां नहीं कॉल कर दी रहा लकियां मैं बाला की दिन ना माँ और रिकॉर्ड करना इधर नहीं थे कॉल ले आराम दिन निकूमर मांग अहन एडिट अगे अहन का य President Maithri Pala Sirisena says that the final decision of the government on the SITEM issue will be announced next week. He said this addressing a function held in Colombo this evening. This government took a number of measures that should be taken to solve the SITEM issue, which is much debated these days and have resulted in protests. Yet, we know there are opposite views of students, political organizations and other parties who are interested in the issue. We hope to announce the final decision this government can give on this issue next week. We believe this decision will be satisfactory to the students and others who oppose SITEM. In the meantime, speaking at the function to issue a commemoration stamp in memory of the late senior journalist D.B. Danapala, the president expressed views on journalists. We often saw journalists disappearing, being assassinated, leaving the country and their workstations being burnt down. What is sad is some journalists being in the pockets of corrupted politicians. Saving the corrupted politicians and singing songs of praise in return for private benefits is unfortunate. In the meantime, the inmates of the Anuradhapura prison are engaged in a fast unto death campaign and their parents called on the president this morning. The discussion was held following a request made by Northern Provincial Councillor M.K. Shivajaningam. We explained there are only 34 who are sentenced. There is no way for them to come out of jail. Their 200 or 300 year sentences were shortened to 30 years. What we asked is why do they still keep 117 members since the former president Mahindra Rajapaksa could release 12,000 members of the LTTE following rehabilitation. A debate was held in Parliament regarding action taken by police officers during the recent Hamban Tote protest. They are asking whether we will take disciplinary action against the police officers who assaulted the journalist. Yes, of course. An investigation is being conducted under the DIG of Gaul region. In addition, the National Police Commission is also conducting an investigation. The officer in question is already transferred from the Gaul Division. Following complaints, ASP Daluate is transferred to his 
hometown in Madara. Madara, The legal matter is that if he stays in his division, it will be a disturbance to the investigations. So, it's fair that he is removed from the particular division. IGP Pooja Jayasundar is the first in his position to challenge parliamentarians, saying he will arrest any parliamentarian. He challenged you. They say it was a journalist who was arrested, but his actions there had nothing to do with journalism. He was arrested because he participated in the protest and acted in an unruly manner. The journalist was recording footage using his mobile phone. He had not even picked up a stone. Meanwhile, the ongoing Saitam issue was also discussed in Parliament. Saitam that was established without the approval of the Sri Lanka Medical Council has now been transformed into a national crisis. The chief prelates have already submitted their request to the government. What action will the government take to solve the issue? I have a question for MP Gunavardhana. He said Saitam was established without the approval of the Medical Council, but he himself gave the approval because it was he who presented the Gazette in the Parliament for the establishment of CITEM. This is the Gazette. It says the South Asian International Institute of Medicine. On the 26th of September 2013, the Special Gazette is presented to the Parliament by Minister Dinesh Gunawardhana on behalf of the Higher Education Minister S.B. Disanayake. So what are you talking about now? We feel embarrassed to ask questions like this. You should apologize to the chief prelates. Will the government take action following the request by the four chief prelates? We are following a neutral path. We agree to any solution that does not say Saitam should be closed down. We can't close it because there is a court order. They can file a case against us. Defence Secretary Kapila Vaidyaratna rejected claims expressed by a group of MPs claiming that there are two different legal systems in the country. He expressed these views following religious observances at the sacred temple of the Tooth Relic in Kandy last evening. <laughs> We have only one law in this country which has to be followed by each and every citizen. One can express their view in any manner they wish, but what is important is how we accept and react to these views. Those who have made such comments are perhaps specialists and with their own interpretation of the law. But we have only one law, and it is this law that is in place. It is not good to harbor doubts pertaining this matter. It will not happen, and we will not let it happen. Parliamentarian Mahinda Nanda Gamage urges the Chairman of the Election Commission to announce the stance of the Commission with regards to elections. The MP says Election Commission's stance should be voiced if the Minister of Provincial Councils and Local Government fails to produce the Gazette pertaining to the numbers of members in each local government to Parliament this week. He expressed these views addressing a media briefing of the Joint Opposition today. <laughs> Addressing Parliament, the Minister of Local Government said on Monday the Gazette of the Local Government Elections will be issued this week. The Chairman of the Elections Commission also said that this will be done. What's happening now is that Minister Mano Ganeshan is going to the court over delimitation in Ambagamu area. With him going to court, the elections will be postponed. After that court case, another is getting ready to go to court over women representation. The next court case will be on women representation. When the Elections Commission is preparing to announce the dates for elections in January, the government is taking all the measures to postpone elections. They won't hold provincial council elections either. The government keeps talking about a referendum on the constitution and they won't hold it either. The chief prelates of Askir and Malwadu chapters will soon issue a big order to stop bringing the constitution. There won't be any elections until 2020. That's how this government established democracy in this country. People's collective affected by the Central Expressway project held a protest in Colombo today. They say that fair compensation is not paid for the land and houses that will be procured for the Central Expressway project. 
People's collective affected by the Central Expressway project commenced the protest before the Road Development Authority at 11.30 a.m. today. Not receiving fair compensation for land and houses they stand to lose, irregularities of LARC committees and lack of land allocation for those who will lose their houses and land in its entirety are among the issues raised. A group of protesters meanwhile received the opportunity to discuss the matter with the additional secretary of the Road Development Authorities today. We met with the additional secretary. He said he'd organize a meeting with all the relevant parties within two weeks. Meanwhile, views were expressed in Parliament today regarding the three Japanese companies attached to the Central Expressway project. What are these three companies? Taisei is a construction company. Pentoshin Company, on the other hand, is not a construction company. And the third company is a bridge construction company. Two out of three companies are not construction companies. They didn't even bid for this. You sent a letter to the Japanese embassy requesting to nominate a name for the project. But they said they don't want to get involved. I have the letter of reply by the Japanese embassy. Do you think all in this country are infants? I tell this parliament that no fraudulent activity has taken place in this regard. They're trying to stop the project. On to one other headline making news. Pradeep Jawardhana, the grandson of first executive president of Sri Lanka, Jaya Jawardhana, made a dramatic entry into the active politics by denouncing the proposed constitution today. He entered the political arena as the district organizer for Gampaha from the SLFP. Many people are talking about this without really understanding why President Jaya Jawardhana brought this constitution and introduced it. So this constitution had nothing to do with his own personal reasons. It was his firm belief that a presidential system of government was necessary to avoid the executive being vic a victim of parliament. We are talking about a devolution, doing away with the executive presidency, and we are talking about weakening the, the centre. If we do all of these things, I have no doubt that this, government, this country will become ungovernable. The proposals that are before us, my own view is that they should not even be discussed. To me, they make no sense. I can tell you one example. In 1995, when package was introduced, where a proposal was made for a union of regions, President Jayawadana was able to study these, which was published in the newspaper, and he had Ranil Vikram Singh, who was leader of the opposition, he had him come to Ward Place. He asked him to come to Ward Place and told him, please oppose this immediately. And Mr. Ranil Vikram Singh was not of the view that it should be opposed at that time, that he felt it could be opposed later. Of course, as you know, the history was that this was, uh, the draft had many revisions and in 2000, finally the UNP tore this document and threw it away. When Mr. Ranil Vikram Singh left, what my grandfather told me was that if I was Ranil, I will take this document to the south, I will show this document to the people in the south and tell them that with this document, all of the land available for development is lost. Unfortunately, that advice was not heard by Ranil Vikram Singh because he was not there to listen to it and I think but today I think he, those words are still relevant. Let's now take a look at other stories making news across Sri Lanka. Lanka Satusa states that price of imported samba rice will be reduced by 4 rupees. Making the statement, Chairman of Satusa TMK Bithenakon said that rice can be bought at the newly revised price from tomorrow. The Ministry of Wildlife Conservation has decided to complete a census of all elephants in the country. Minister of Wildlife Conservation Garmini Jayavikrama Pereira said that the census will be conducted in January. An individual entered a two-storied house of a lawyer in Hill Street and stole jewellery and electronic equipment worth approximately 1 million rupees. The theft was captured on CCTV. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, Other Verana 24-7. A top quality hotel offering exceptional luxury is defined as a five-star hotel. However, is Sri Lanka doing enough to promote itself as a tourist destination? And is the country prepared to meet the expectations of the luxury market? In the second installment of this three-part series, we spoke to the Vice President and General Manager of Shangri-La, Timothy Wright, to gain his insight into the tourist market.
Now, what location are we in in Shangri-La? So this is our signature Chinese restaurant, Shang Palace. Um, we, uh, we're renowned for our Chinese cuisine, as you can imagine. And uh, we've gone to great lengths at, uh, uh, at creating a uh, contemporary, uh, yet uh, authentic uh, Chinese restaurant. We've got four Chinese chefs uh, and a brigade that have been trained uh, in uh, various sections of the, of the Chinese cuisine. Uh, a big element will be a, a show kitchen involving dim sum and, of course, crab, uh, which is very much part of uh, Sri Lankan cuisine. So I believe we have another restaurant to visit which will bring all yes. the cultures and culinary yes, yes, aesthetics yes. together. Yes, yes. So shall we go yes, there? That's good. So Tim, we are here at another restaurant in uh, Shangri-La. Could we speak about this particular restaurant? This is uh, our all-day dining restaurant uh, called Table One. And as you can see, uh, lots of wood elements, um, large uh, giant fruit, um, sculptures. And the designer has taken uh, really some of the, uh, the elements of, um, of uh, markets in, in Sri Lanka and brought them into this restaurant where you've got lots of different stations where uh, you can get different items to eat. Um, most of it prepared uh, as in front of the guests, so it's freshly cooked. Uh, so it's a buffet, but uh, it's, it's freshly cooked food right in front of the guests. But let's say we have low budget travelers that come to Sri Lanka. Do you think that there'll be an impact in terms of uh, the tourism that you are trying to target, as in will you all be getting the numbers uh, per se or do you all see an improvement or how is Shangri-La kind of trying to mitigate that, particular developing country like Sri Lanka? I, I think, um, you know, Sri Lanka has a reputation of, of, of attracting the adventurer, seeker, the, uh, the, the traveller who is perhaps looking to, to, to vacation on a, on, a, on a lower budget. I believe with hotels such as Shangri-La and, and others that are moving into Colombo, we'll see that the marketing uh, reach and the distribution channels that those brands have will be bringing perhaps travelers who, are, who have higher expectations and, and who are willing to pay a little more. The challenge will be to how do we meet those higher expectations and certainly that is something that uh, the hoteliers and the businesses in uh, Colombo in particular but Sri Lanka as a whole will have to really start to work on how can we uh, meet those higher expectations. When you uh, look at the current data, 2016 I think is less, a little bit above 1%. So with that trend, do you see it getting better? Do you, do you, does Shangri-La see it getting better? And what is the viability of, of such a clientele? Well, I think the, the arrival statistics into Sri Lanka have, have shown tremendous growth over uh, the years since the end of the conflict. And, and I think uh, that, that growth has been organic, has been pent up demand for travelers coming into, uh, into Sri Lanka and, and, and Colombo. Uh, I think the, the, the recent numbers are, are portraying a little bit of a worrying trend that that growth is starting to, 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 to plateau uh, and I think um, um, the, the government and, and the tourism uh, authority really need to focus on their marketing efforts really to target uh, potential clientele coming in, uh, potential passengers, potential tourists uh, coming into uh, Sri Lanka. I know there's plans uh, afoot and I know that there is a willingness there uh, but certainly you know, time is, is, is ticking on and we really need to start addressing our promotion of this beautiful country to those people who perhaps haven't visited. Uh, there are lots of interest to come to Sri Lanka and it's really now how to capture that interest and, and to bring them here. Sri Lankan shares ended down for a third straight session today to hit near a one-week low led by banking stocks while block deals boosted the turnover. The Colombo Stock Index ended 0.25% weaker at 6,555.46, its lowest close since 10th of October. We now have the daily market update with Imeshi Fernando from the Colombo Stock Exchange. 
Today's foreign purchases were 449.59 million rupees and foreign sales were 432.36 million rupees. The turnover was 1.07 billion rupees with 30.6 million shares changing hands in 5006 trades. The market capitalization at the end of the day was 2973.02 billion rupees. You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Dharana 24-7. New Zealand Labour Party leader Jacinda Ardern was today declared the Prime Minister-elect after Kingmaker New Zealand First Party leader Winston Peters pledged his support for a new coalition. Ardern, who took the leadership of the Labour Party in August, will become New Zealand's third female Prime Minister and country's largest, uh, youngest rather leader in recent years. New Zealand's general election held on the 23rd of September reached an inconclusive end with the National Party gaining 44.4% votes and Labour Party gaining 36.9 votes, leaving New Zealand First Party as the kingmaker with 7.2% votes. New Zealand First Party leader Peters, who conducted discussions on forming coalition over several weeks, announced his support of New Zealand Labour Party leader Arden today and praised the Prime Minister-elect on her extraordinary talents. Spain's Prime Minister's office today declared its decision to trigger Article 155 of Spain's constitution on Saturday, 21st of October, following Catalan leader Charles O'Carl's Puigdemont's refusal to retract the declaration of Catalonia's independence. Releasing a letter to the public this morning, leader Carlos Puigdemont stated that the Catalan parliament could proceed to vote on a formal declaration of independence if the Spanish government continues to impede dialogue and continues with the repression. The letter was released minutes before the deadline assigned by Spain's Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy, demanding the retractation of Catalonia's independence declaration. Responding to the statement by the Catalan leader, Spanish Prime Minister's office declared its decision to prompt Article 155 of the 1978 constitution that would suspend Catalonia's political autonomy and impose direct rule. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, Other Verana 24-7. Sri Lanka's losing streak in one day internationals extended to 10 matches after a brutal seven wicket loss against Pakistan in the third one day international Abu Dhabi yesterday. A five wicket haul from Hassan Ali and a century on a debut from Imam ul Haq helped Pakistan take an unassailable 3 0 lead in the, three, in the five match series. Chasing a victory target of 209, Pakistan openers posted a 78 run partnership for the first wicket. What is wrong? And he was looking for it. Imam ul Haq, nephew of Pakistan legend Inzamam ul Haq, scored a brilliant century on debut and shepherded the team towards victory. Really big moment. Second Pakistan batsman to get 100 on debut. Fakhar Zaman was the first dismissal in the Pakistan innings as he fell for 29. Dangerous Babar Azam was restricted for 30 by paceman Lahiru Gamage. The reaction from Lairu Gamage tells the story. Mohamed Hafiz remained unbeaten on 34 to steer Pakistan over the winning line. The series with two we spoke about the test series, but... but uh... You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Dharana 24-7. Let's now cross over to Dhammike Kanaika at the Other Dharana Weather Centre with your forecast for the next 24 hours.
Good evening and welcome to the Weather Centre. Now, as usual, the country's eastern and southeastern regions will be much warmer, although the western parts of the island aren't that far behind with temperatures of high 20s and 30 degrees Celsius also set to be breached at some places. The central hills, of course, will stay much, much cooler. The western parts are also set for some showers, with the western province in particular set to experience some heavy rains. Now, that's it from the Weather Centre and let's now take a look at your city by city forecast. Before we leave you tonight, we bring you footage of thousands of Tarikaya turtles, which are classified as vulnerable, being released in Peru's Amazon region as part of efforts to conserve the majestic species on the verge of extinction. Staff from Peru's National Service of Natural Areas, protected by the state, released some 5,000 baby turtles as part of an ongoing program. We hope you enjoy. Good night and have a pleasant evening. Information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel, other than 24 7.